What's up, everybody? And welcome back to the Verzi Effect podcast show. My name is Paul Verzi. You guys are listening to episode 511. How the hell is everybody doing? I hope everybody enjoyed last week's episode with my good friend, um, Bobby Kelly. More guests to come. But um, right now, I'm just flying solo, talking a little shit, man. I'm just, I'm having a week, man. I'm having a week, good things and bad things. Okay, we're, we're doing some editing on the special. We got the first cut of my special. Um, looks great. I'm really excited about that, but we got to make sure that's right. Then, um, you know, going down to the city, got to get some new jokes now. Uh, doing all that stuff, getting ready. I'm not traveling this weekend. Next weekend, guys, I'll be in Houston. I will be at the Improv in Houston, Texas next week. And don't forget October 22nd. So I'll be at the Improv in Houston, the 14th to the 16th. And then October 22nd, the Wilbur Theater. So make sure you get tickets for that. Tickets are going. I cannot wait to be um, out there in a few weeks. Um, but yeah, man, I'm coming in. Not hot, but I'm just annoyed. I'm annoyed. I'm having one of those days like, well, you know where like people are self-righteous to you or they're, they're self-righteous and they act like they have the answers, but like they, they, they don't. And, and they're acting like, you know, I just don't like being, I don't like being judged or I don't like people acting like they have the answers in this self-righteous way when it's like, well, what are you doing? You know? And, and I'm kind of dealing with that. Um, but, but let's get positive. Let's talk. Um, let's, let's talk tag sale, everybody. Okay. I know that I did this many years ago when I was doing the Verzi effect. Okay. I was doing the Verzi effect and I talked about the level the element that comes to a tag sale. My mother had one. These people were coming out of the woodwork like zombies this one guy had his hand in his pocket looking at things. He stayed there for five hours. He stayed there all day just looking at things. I think he wanted to hang out. I've done another tag sale once where a guy just sat in a chair. He wanted company. He was like a widower. Guy dressed to the nines, didn't buy anything, just sat there. I would have liked like 50 cents. You know, give me 50 cents and you could sit here all day. Give me, give me something. Um, but so uh, my wife... And I have some things because we're about to do, there's a couple of things we're going to do. We're either going to remodel, we're going to redo a room. We got a bunch of things that we're, that we're going to do. Um, and we have a ton of stuff and a lot of good stuff, but we didn't know what to do with it. So my wife is like, what if, you know, we have a tag sale, I'll have your, your mom come over and help us out with the tag sale. And we have a lot of nice stuff and you could go and put up signs. And I was like, what? So you go put up signs in the neighborhood. So, um, <laughs> so anyway, my wife makes like six, six signs that say tag sale, huge tag sale with my address on it in my neighborhood, hands them to me. And I have a staple gun, a, just a staple gun with me. And I go out there and I got to look for telephone poles where cars are passing by. They're going to see the tag sale sign and they're going to come to my house. Okay. And we're doing this for some reason. We were last minute with the signs, which is very important. I guess you could put things online. So I'm driving and I'm finding these things and I'm so, it's so awkward. It's so awkward, right? Hold on. I got to change the this thing. There we go. It's so awkward. And I'm running out of the car. And at one point I went to this intersection. I ran out with the fucking staple gun and sign. I did it so quick. I got in my car and I peeled out like I just robbed the bank. I'm not kidding. Like one tire was on gravel. The other three tires were on the, the con regular, you know, concrete is like just a, it looked like I committed a crime and I just sped off. Cause now I'm thinking somebody's going to see me uh, somebody in the neighborhood. Hey, Paul, what are you doing? Uh, and I would have just ratted my, I mean, I'm not rat my wife out. I shouldn't say rat her out, but I would have had to at that point, 
just be like, ah, oh, my what you know, my wife sent me like something. And I don't even want to rat my wife out because I'm not a rat. So I would just have to do like, oh, we got some, like I would just have to make some kind and just get out of it. Just get out of it. Okay. Um, my wife's having a thing and just go. <laughs> so, so I go to one intersection that's busy. Then I go to another one. Then I got to put the one by my, on my street. When people come up the hill, like on my street, I got to put one near my son's school. And I'm mortified. I'm like, what am I doing? We're going to make, you know, 40 bucks on this. We should just be giving it away. But, you know, it's a fun thing to do. We had neighbors come over. We had drinks, you know, my parents, all the, the whole deal. Right. So the, the, my wife's got, we had like, I'm not going to lie. We had really good expensive stuff for nothing. We had like a yard trampoline that was given as a gift that we didn't open. It was brand new. It was worth like $350 that my sister bought for my kids. We never opened it. We couldn't. And we had it for like 25 bucks, like a $350, $400 trampoline for, for 50, for $25. Right. So, and it's funny because my stepfather was trying to sell that. He's like, oh, the trampoline, you know, everybody's trying to move shit, certain things. And I, uh, I had in mind to get rid of, uh, we got rid of like the snow blower for 10 bucks. It needed like a carburetor or whatever, but like it needed parts and it's been sitting there for eight years. And we're just like, take it. You know, we had all kinds of, we had like a brand new mattress from Brooklyn bedding that we barely used. And it was a $1,200 mattress. And I would have given it for like 150 bucks. So we just had, and we had really good stuff. Like, we had like, my wife had all of these, like these candle things, like real, I'm not even joking. Like this isn't like a tip. It wasn't like a typical tag sale with, with shit. Like my son had like legit star Wars toys that were brand new sitting like opened and then put on his count cab, uh, you know, like uh, cabinet or whatever and, and, and dresser. And then, and then put those out bobbleheads. If you like star Wars, it was like some, it was cool stuff. If you, and, and for good price, we had just so many DVDs. Right. This one guy, this African guy was looking for his through DVDs. And I'm like, I'll give you 10 DVD, good DVDs, good movies, animated Disney movies, like all, you know, good DVDs that sat in the shelf forever uh, in good shape. And I was like, I give you 10 DVDs for two bucks. And he's looking through them and he's making sure they're all there. And then he hug, he's hugging them and he goes, I'm going to send these to my daughter in Africa. And I'm like, all right, take a couple more for free. Like, as soon as you said that, I'm like, you know, take whatever. I don't, you know, you're sending shit back to Africa. Go, just take whatever. I don't care. Just get it out of here. Let's clear out the driveway. Um, the funniest part of this whole thing, okay, was um, they came over. My mother, stepfather, come over. We got to go get the signs down. We got to go take signs down. And we go to a place and I put the signs in all good places, but there was one sign we needed to take down and fix or whatever. And it was by a place, a cafe that on Sundays they have like exotic cars. So one day they'll, one Sunday, it'll be all Corvettes. It'll be just vets down the line. Then one Sunday it'll be Porsches. And some of the Porsches have numbers on the side, like they're race cars. And then, so, you know, and then we show up, and the telephone pole is outside of this cafe, which is packed and busy. And it's Ferrari day. Okay. I'm not, I'm not bullshit. It's Ferrari day. And there were four, count them, one, two, three, four, $200,000 Ferraris in front of the telephone pole that I had a tag sale at that said tag sale that now we have to get out of the car. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we weren't in my Lexus either. We were in a Toyota and we pull up and I was like, he's like, my stuff. I was like, I'll get it. And I was like, Thank, I'm just like in the car going, just get it as quickly as you can. Walked out in front of four Ferraris and had to take down a tag sale sign. And we just got in the Toyota and took off. But it was just so funny because we're sitting here like having people come over and giving them shit for 50 cents, nothing. And the sign is in front of literally $800,000 worth of Ferrari engines, um, which was ironic and hilarious. 
Um, that being said, I figured out if you're going to, and we're never going to do it again. I'm not going to lie. We're never doing a yard sale again. We're never doing a garage sale again. It's not going to happen. Okay. Um, we had it, we did it. I did it up at my mother's once we did it here. It's just, even though you have nice stuff and you want, you want, I, I would tell neighbors come and take stuff. And yes, some people do, but here's what you got to do. We turned it into a little bit of a party. That's what you do. Okay. So we got some chairs out. Okay. We hung out. We had some whiskey. We had some hard seltzers. We had some beers. Okay. Then neighbors come over. They sit down. Margarita. Then another neighbor comes over with a dessert. And you're just sitting there hanging out. You know, and then when somebody pulls up, you're like, all right, who wants to go up and be the salesperson? You just, hey, man, yeah, take what you want. Whatever. We're trying to get rid of this shit. Um, and I'm not going to lie. Uh, got drunk. We all got a little drunk in the driveway. Had a great time. Laughed. Talked. Um, caught a buzz. It was Saturday. I'm home with my family. I'm excited. I don't have to travel. I'm not doing anything. I'm just, we just did this tag sale. And I'm like, oh, and it's fight night. So we'll get the fight. Then we'll, we'll hang out. We'll, we'll, we'll maybe watch college football. The whole thing over. Could not do any of it. Passed out around eight o'clock and slept through the night. Here's the problem. It was a fun day drinking little party. The bottom line is you can't day drink and then go in for the long haul if you are past 35 years old. Uh, maybe even you got to might even be less than 35 because you just, you're sitting there in the sun, you catch it. When you catch your first nice buzz, which is probably like, I would say you're by the time you're three quarters done your second drink, that's where I think it hits three quarters done the second drink. Now you're debating, all right, am I going to have my third and fourth now fast? Am I going to pace it out? Usually I'm done drinking after three or four if I'm having a good time and it's not a party party. If it's a party party, I'll end up drinking throughout the day, but you pace yourself. But now that I'm an adult, I'm a, I got kids, I'm not going to just start getting hammered. So I would say three or four, but in the sun, and even though it was a little cooler on a fall day, the sun was hitting me, baking my head. I'm like two or three drinks in now. I mixed a little whiskey. Had a little, uh, had a little Johnny Walker blue after a hard seltzer, a uh, couple hard seltzers. And now I'm feeling it and I'm trying to hang. My buddy uh, goes, yeah, man, we're going to hang. Giannis Pop is, yeah, man, we're going to hang later. We're going to come over and come over. Both of us just done, just passed out. Because here's the thing. When you go down on a couch or you lay on a bed after your day drinking starts to settle down and the sun goes down, it's near impossible to, to just pop back up unless people come right back to the house and you take it up a notch with tequila or a shot or keep going. And then in which case, then your, your next day is just shot because of the hangover. So the nice thing was passed out. It sucked though to be off on a Saturday, pass out at eight 30. That's what sucked. Um, missed the fight, missed the games, laid in bed. I tried to watch things on and off, but you know, you're just done. Your day's done. Um, but that's how you do a yard sale or a tag sale. You get some friends over, you get some drinks, you get some chairs, you hang out, you talk to people that show up and you just tell yourself, I'm never fucking doing this again. That's it. A one and done. Get as much junk as you can in your driveway. Make sure it's quality. Don't sell shit. Don't do that. You know, some don't, don't do that. Get stuff that you're not going to use that somebody's going to use books, DVDs, maybe some, you know, some, if there's, you know, people like certain things, art, you know, my wife had all these amazing colored, you know, candle holders and all kinds of stuff like that. And my son had some star Wars toys and some, like I said, some of the stuff was good. There's a snowblower out there. There's a fucking trampoline. There was, there was a table. There were a couple couches we were given for free. Um, so like I said, get your drinking going, have a little party. It's almost like a tag sale tailgate, but throughout everything. And that's the way to do it. Um, and yeah, we had people, but it's funny how you turn into a salesperson. Like, it's not about the money. Nobody cares. 
we're not worried about making $40 in a day. Like if you make 150, it's like, whatever, like nobody, it's not about the money, but it's just funny how you're like, all right, come on. Every time a car would come out, come maybe they're coming, maybe they're coming. No, no, here they are. Here they are. This, this, this is for this. This is for this. And the weird thing was when one would come, two would come. So it was very rare that just one car would come. It was like, it was like two or three. It was literally like having a store. And uh, I got competitive. I was like, I got to try to sell. So I'd get, hey, how you doing? What do you want? You know, listen, take how many DVDs? You got DVDs? You got kids? And I was just selling stuff. And how much? I had two bucks. You would have thought that the $2 was going to feed me for a month. That's how, no, no, $2. What, how much? What do you want to spend? I, I was like giving them the option. One of the funniest things was this truck shows up and these like burly landscapers get out dirty. So a couple guys were big. They looked like they'd been out in the yard. They, they, they had dirt on their face, they, you know, construction boot, Timberland boots. And this guy came and he just picked up this elephant, this like, I don't porcelain elephant, whatever. He's just walking around my yard with an elephant. And this other guy, this, uh, this dude picked up this like red patent leather, red purse with a gold linked, <laughs> with a, with a gold linked, like what's it called? Strap. And he's walking around with this thing. This guy looked like he just got finished mowing fucking 19 lawns, this guy. And he's walking around. His friend's got an elephant. He's got the purse. This other guy's looking at like some tarp. It was one of the funniest things. How much for this? How much for this? I was like, all right, that's eight. That's three. This guy just, you know, took out like, took out a wad, gave us like 12 bucks, got in the car. Other guys came, uh, left, came back with a truck to get stuff, or we thought they were going to get stuff. Anyway, a lot of fun, got drunk, never again. Never again am I going to say, yeah, it's $2, but what do you want? For, like, what do you want? To, I'm never again am I going to staple signs to a telephone call. I told my wife this was a great one and done. Never again are we going to do it. I'd rather put all the shit on the side of the road with a giant sign that says, please take our shit. We'll pay you. Okay, how about this? Come to our door. I'll give you 500 bucks. I would do this. I am not kidding you. I am not kidding you. I would do this. I would say, take all our shit. Knock on the door. If you come with a truck and take it all, I will give you $500 cash. Just take this shit away. I would do that. Just pull up. Get rid of our 1000 There you go. 1000 bucks. I give you $1,000 if you come here with a gigantic moving truck and get all of the shit that we're selling out of here. We'll give you $1,000. There you go. Clean, uh, free and clear. No stapling posters. No taking posters down that say tag sale in front of Ferraris. No putting them up in shame, peeling out like you're the Dukes of Hazard because you want nobody to see you doing this. None of it. No putting out tables and putting out all kinds of things that you eventually have to clean up when nobody comes to take and buy the shit over one and done. Never do it. Had a great time. If that makes sense, that's, that's how my Saturday went. Um, but it was a good bonding fun time with family. So there you go. Um, now, you know, what would have been better if we had family over and we put out chairs and we just drank and didn't have responsibility. <laughs> Didn't have to do anything like that. Um, but that's it. I had a rough week too. I was sick, man. I was uh, sick and we had to get COVID tests because God forbid you sneeze three times nowadays. So we did that shit and um, found out we were negative, but everybody was congested, sick, um, the whole thing. So what are you going to do? But um, I'm excited I'm excited that um, my wife agreed that we're never going to do a tag sale again. And um, I never have to deal with that again. So, you know, it's a one and done. It's like when I met her and I said, I'm doing comedy. So you got to figure out out if you want to be with me. Um, that's my advice. That's the podcast advice. Be up front right out of the gate. This is what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing in my life. Um, you're in or you're out. That's fine. But that's it or we're never doing that again, or I'm never comfortable doing that. So we're never going to do that again. If you're cool, cool. And if you know, and if the other person has something that they want to tell you, then good, get it all out on the table. That's what I say. Get it all out on the table. Get it all out on the table.
all of your issues, all of your all of your quirks, all of the things that you do. That's it. Hey, I'm a little mentally ill. I suffer from anxiety, depression, OCD. Um, that's what it is. I'll try to work on it. I'm also a night owl, so I like to sleep in. I don't like corner peas. Okay. Uh, I'm spontaneous. So I like to go to airports on a whim and fly places. I don't like to plan, but I'm really into you. What do you think? Hi, I'm Paul Verzi. There you go. That's it. Then when somebody makes peas, you're like, I, what didn't you get it all out there? Get it all out there. Should you live together before you get married? I say yes. I say yes. A lot of people say, oh, well, you know, that's it. I know, but it's, it's, I don't know. I think you gotta. Because I couldn't imagine not, I couldn't imagine not knowing what that's like and then going into a nightmare. Could you imagine? That's happened. Think about that. That's happened. That has happened where somebody's like, no, you know what? Let's do it the traditional way and let's, let's do it the right way. And, 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 you know, and, and that's great. That's great. You know, the, the, the religious right way to do it. We're going to, we're going to not live together until our, the first night we're married and the guy's excited. He's like, this is going to be amazing. And she's excited. And then you get married and you go on a honeymoon and those couple of days are great because you've been on vacation together. That's been fine. And then now you're like three weeks in, you're starting to notice some things. She says, do you mind just not moving the picture frame that way? And you're like, okay, all right. Um, oh, by the way, do you mind? Like, I like when the rug in the bathroom is against the thing that way. Can you leave it? Okay, no problem. Yeah. Yeah, I like the coffee jar over here. Okay. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, I married a psycho control freak. And this is not my house, even though we're both paying for it. That's happened where a guy's been like, you know what? I know a married couple who wanted to get their own places. And I know a married couple who have their own rooms. I swear to God. I know a happily married couple, two daughters, beautiful girls. Okay. They're completely happy successful marriage great just when it's when it's like fall asleep time like they have their bedroom but then there's another bedroom and they're together and everything is good and then they're just like i want to sprawl out snoring i don't want to do and i'm just not gonna i mean if it's it seems like that would be a bad marriage or not good these people are happy and they're happy together can't knock it if it works you can't knock it, but there has been, so I, me and my wife lived together for a little bit and I kind of knew the, and it was in a small place, small quarters. And, um, you know, she got me, you know how they get you? Why pay two rents? I just, why pay two rents? I do. A, I did a joke about this. Like why pay two rents? It's like, I, cause I love my time without you, to be honest. I love, <laughs> I love the time you ever with somebody and like when they leave you just close the door you're like oh god you're just in your underwear for fucking 72 hours sitting on the couch with nothing to do all that's there is to go bags that you ate from food delivery that's the that that time is important too but you, i would say live i would say live together i don't know how we got here i don't know where the hell um we're going uh, I'm going to talk about it on the Anything Better podcast with Bill Burr, but the New York football giants got off the snide. What a game by Danny Dimes. Really excited. And I'm not going to lie. I picked it and I kind of called it because that was the season. Okay. The New York Yankees, on the other hand, are done. Kind of deserve not to win the way they played. What can you say about that? Um, did I see, I'm trying to think, did I see a movie? I thought I saw something. Did I see something? Yes. What did I see? Oh my God. I saw something recently and I wanted to talk about it. It was on, was it on uh, Netflix? I just watched the whole thing. 
I watched I watched the Chappelle. I watched the Dave Chappelle special. And I'm going to be honest. One of the reasons why is because I have a special that's in the can and we just filmed it. So we have a couple of months before this thing comes out, right? What are we, October? So yeah, November, December, like want to get this thing out the, the early in the year, next year. And you want to just make sure, okay, when one of the all-time greats is talking for an hour or whatever, you're just like, oh, please don't touch on this. Don't, because that's happened. That happened to me with a joke I did about going and getting a dog at a rescue shelter. Louis C.K. special came out. People called me up. Guess you got to take that out. So I'm not going to lie. I was nervous. You're always nervous, especially when a monster comic does like an hour and 15. And, and it's we're kind of living. Obviously, we're living in the same times. So Are they going to touch on something? But um, man, Chappelle went in. I, I mean, he went in, man. He said some stuff. I was just like, this dude's taking bullets for all of us. Um, but really good, man, really good. But I saw something else and I can't picture, I, I can't, I saw, was it a documentary or something? I saw something and I just can't, I can't put my finger on it right now. And it's driving me nuts. It was a movie maybe. Oh my God. What was it? I know I'm, I'm asking you guys. I'm asking, it was, I put it on. Oh, 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 the guilty. Yes, yes, yes. The guilty. I saw Jake Gyllenhaal was being investigated for a crime that he might've committed or not. You find out at the end. Um, spoiler alert, if you're listening to this, you can fast forward after me reviewing this. The guilty, Jake Gyllenhaal. Um, I gotta tell you something, man. So anyway, the movie is, he's a, he's a, he's a 911, uh, he's taken in 911 calls. And because he got demoted while they're investigating this. And the day after, the day after he's going to go to court and uh, they're going to see if he's going to go back on the street and get his job back. And you don't know to the end what he did. Um, and he's very, very on edge and he's very, very like quick to snap and he's getting these calls and he's annoyed. And then one woman calls and she's like in a car and she's basically saying, I was taken. Can you help me? I need help. And he's like trying to figure it out. And then she gets disconnected and he finds everything out and um, spoiler alert. Okay. So stop, pause it. I'm telling you this right now. I'm giving you a good five seconds. I'm going to tell you what happens during the guilty and what the end is of the guilty right now. Spoiler alert on the Verzi effect. Stop and fast forward. There you go. You had your chance. You had your chance. Um, what happened was they had two little kids at home, a little girl who was also called him or that he called and the little girl answered and a little brother, baby brother who was in the crib and blood was coming from the crib. And they kind of found out that the little boy was stabbed in the crib and he's going, pull the emergency brake. When he comes in, she's like, he put me in the back. There's just bricks here. And he goes, take a brick and hit the guy. He deserves it. All this stuff come to find out towards the end of the movie that the woman says something like, yeah, the baby had snakes in his stomach and I fixed it. And he realized that the mother stabbed her son, the baby. And the whole time the father is trying to take the mother to some fucking insane asylum or like do something. I forgot, like they were, you know, trying to just get the mother away from the, the kids. And, um, he had somebody go to the house to take care of the kid, but they think that the, the little boy is dead and he realizes he fucked up and she's on a bridge about to kill herself. She runs out of the truck, calls back and she's about to kill herself. Um, and as she's about to, he goes, I killed a guy. I killed a guy. And he admits the horrible thing that he did. And the whole thing kind of comes and then you find out the little boy didn't die and she lived and all that. And I heard the original, it was different and a lot more morbid and sad and shitty, but that's basically what, um, that's basically what happened. I will tell you this, Jake Gyllenhaal's a monster actor, monster, a couple little overreaction things, but, but as far as the Verzi effect approval, um, for a movie where a guy is just answering phone calls and you don't see much else. It's literally him in a room taking phone calls and sounds are a part of it. Alarms, phones ringing, 
arguing, things like that in the background. Like that's pretty much the movie. And for that, it kept me gripped. It kept me in. The acting was great. Um, so I would say the TVE uh, movie approval stamp. Yes, I give it the thumbs up. I would definitely see it again. Not going to blow you away. All right. Even though I just told you what it is. Um, but even still, if you want to see how they did it, I think that like a movie like that, even though I mean, I completely just ruined it. So it'd be hard to watch knowing that she did it. Um, but it was good. It was good. So yeah, I just spoiled it. Never mind. Probably, you're probably never going to see it. I did hear bad things about the, um, the, the Sopranos movie, the Newark, uh, Saints of Newark, many Saints of Newark. Um, I'm hearing mixed things. I've heard a handful of people say it was really good, but then I heard people say how bad it was and that they really didn't like it. And it was bad. I don't know. Um, I'll watch it when I can. I'm not rushing to watch that movie, but, um, we will see. We will see. I, I'm not like, I, I don't know. I just, I get scared with mob movies because you hear one coming out and you're like, there's been so many good ones that to top the good ones are to be up there, but you do get a gem. You do get lightning in a bottle every once in a while. Um, so I will try it. I'll see what the deal is um, with the um, many saints of Newark. Uh, anything else? Is there an unacceptable, you know, no, nah, I kind of have an unacceptable, but I don't want to go there right now just because it's a, I had a day. I had an annoying day. And yes, there's something unacceptable, but I'm not going to deal with it right now. Don't want to, you know, when you're like, kind of, you kind of get a little Zen, you kind of get a little good, you know, that's where I'm at right now. There's always going to be a little unacceptable, but you know, we'll see, uh, we'll see nothing, nothing crazy. And, and the one that I could go into would go on to some long thing. And I said, this to somebody yesterday run your race and don't worry at all about what other people are doing, thinking and saying about you. That's what I would say. Okay. If other people are saying shit about you, if other people are judging you, if other people are, are doing things and, and, and you're being like either dragged into or talked into it, or, or um, I should say people talking to you about it, or you seeing whatever you're seeing and you try to make, get rid of it, run your race, blinders on okay nothing else matters people are going to judge people are going to say shit that's fine that's fine let them let them all right because all of that shit is part of their shit let them deal with their shit it's what it is i'll leave it at that i know that that's broad and i know that that's vague run your race don't worry about it let's talk about some positive things like me going to houston texas back to Houston. I'll be there actually twice. I'm going to be there for Skank Fest, I think November 5th through the 7th, but I will be there October 14th through the 16th. I'm coming back to the Houston Improv. I had a great time there last time. There's great restaurants around there. It's going to be awesome. I'm bringing my boy Tyler Horvath there. He's going to open for me. Um, we're going to have a good time out there in Texas. We're going to smoke some sticks. All right, we're going to go to this amazing swanky wine spot. We're going to have a great time. I know that sounds like I'm being a pretentious dick, but I don't go to, I'm not going to go to a rowdy Texas bar, okay, a after performing two shows on a Friday, going to a place, hey, fucking, woohoo, doing shots. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. I'm not drinking on the road too much. What I do is like a gentleman, like a gentleman with my chains out. I go to a wine place and you know what they do at the wine place? They bring out Italian meats, prosciutto and super sod and all of those good meats. And they pair them with cheeses. And then these people, these wine connoisseurs, these winos, they call them, they come out and they go, oh, you know what? Wine goes really good with this cheese and that meat. So try this and try that. This one's from Spain. This one's from New Zealand. This one's from Italy. This one's from France. And then you find the sipper that you love and you have two glasses of wine. If it's really that good, you have three course of about two hours. And then you go back to the hotel, you sleep like a baby and you're rested the next day. And then you go and you do the next shows before flying home. That's what I'm doing in Houston, Texas this week. 
Okay. I'm sorry. Not this weekend. Next weekend, the 14th through the 16th. And then Boston, Boston, Massachusetts. I'm going to be in fan. I'm going to go to Faneuil Hall for some chowder, kid. I am headlining the Wilbur Theater, October 22nd. Tickets are going. All right. And uh, that place is amazing. Whether downstairs or in the balcony, they're right there. It's amazing. Um, and I cannot wait to go there. So you can get tickets at the, the Wilbur Theater website. Um, I believe they're on, on my website, paulverzi.com. Um, so I hope you guys go there. Um, I'm coming in hot to Boston. So I'm looking forward to that. And um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm like the thing about Boston cities like Boston, by the way, I mean, the Red Sox beating the Yankees last night. It's a tough one. Look, it's a tough one, but the Yankees, you know, you can't, the, you, when you don't deserve to win, you can't win 13 straight games and then lose the next 11 out of 12 and be like, Oh, this is a team that, it's it's you go in kind of going anything could happen here. The Yanks could have went in and beat anybody or lose to anybody. When you have a team that inconsistent, it doesn't hurt that much. You know, it's almost like a quicker bullet to the head death than just a slow cuts and bleeding. Um, but I have I do. I do have an affinity. For, I, there's something about Boston. It saved my mother's life. My brother went to college there. I'm looking so forward to going out there. The people of New England and the people of Boston and that whole area has been amazing to me throughout my career. Uh, I spent a lot of times in this com in this room, in this venue. And uh, last time I was there, I was with Sal Vacano from Impractical Joker. So to go there now myself, I've been there a bunch of times, but to go there and headline there myself is going to be amazing. I cannot wait to go there. Um, and yeah, bring in the family. We're going to go out there. Hopefully the weather's good. I'll go to the new England aquarium. I'll go out to Faneuil hall. I'm getting oysters at the oldest restaurant in America. The, the union was the union oyster house where they got the dummy waiter and the guys like they're literally taking, they're shucking oysters and they just like just came out of the ocean bags. And they're just shucking them. They're incredible with an ice cold beer. Of course, I can't do that the day of the show. I'll, um, the show's Friday night. I'll, Saturday, I'll be out in Boston making a mess of myself. You know, I'll be slurring my words. I'll be, you know, there'll be freaking oyster shells on my head. Um, we're going to go out. It'll be one of those days where I'm in bed by eight o'clock in my hotel or whatever. But, but uh, I'm going out there and we're going to have fun, um, you know, regardless. And I hope you guys are following me. I want to thank everybody who's listening to the Verzi Effect. Okay. Uh, really, really appreciate you guys uh, listening to it. Please tell a friend the Verzi Effect. Uh, you can get it on Spotify, iTunes, everywhere that you get your um, podcast. If there's a, a guest you'd like me to have on, um, let me know. We had Bobby Kelly last week. Uh, next week, I have a couple of good guests coming on. I think next week I'm going to have a guest. So you guys will see that. Um, but get me on social media too. Get me on Instagram. Get me on Twitter. All right. At Paul Verzi. Uh, guys, I'm not going to lie to you. Okay. If you're listening to this and you're a fan, you know, I don't lie when I talk quality. Um, we looked at the intro and we looked at the special the first run around. Um, I can tell you guys this, this special is, um, we're really excited about it. I put a lot of work into this and, um, it's, it shows, it shows, and it's better than I'll say this. And I love, I'll say this. I know I told you guys that before, but, um, I cannot wait for you guys to see it. Unfortunately, I can't say definitely where it's going to be, but it will be on a major platform. It will be somewhere for all of you to see and have access to very easily that much. I can tell you. I can tell you that it will be coming out early, early 22. We're shooting for January, but I can also tell you that it looks real good. And I'm really, really excited for the world to see this. Um, and uh, yeah, man, we're, uh, you know, going to keep going. So uh, thank you guys. You guys are the shit. Thank you for listening to uh, the Verzi effect. Don't do a tag sale. And if you get dragged to, to have to do one of them, just make sure you have a lot of booze on hand, people that you love, some chairs in the lawn and uh, or the the lawn's a little trashy, but nothing's what's trashier than going to a tag sale and then seeing the family sitting in chairs drinking on the lawn, just a little down by the driveway, by the house. You know, uh, I would do that. But there you go. So uh, the guilty, I'm sorry that I ruined it for you. 
Um, what else? What else? What else? And the Chappelle thing I thought was definitely worth watching. So there you go. There's I'm not going to spoil any of those jokes or anything like that. See Chappelle's special and uh, the guilty I ruined for you. And uh, yeah, that's it. So this has been episode 511. We will have a guest next week. Um, maybe I'll have a guest in Houston. I don't know. Maybe we'll, we'll figure something like that. I don't know how we're going to do it, but we'll figure something out, uh, whether it's a zoom or, um, whatever, but thank you guys for listening, subscribe, tell a friend, subscribe to my YouTube channel, guys. Um, you can get podcast information there. You can get, um, podcast clips there. You can get stand up clips there. Oh, and more is going to come. More is going to come. So thank you guys. Uh, I love you all. And until next week, I'm out of here.